Welcome to Jazz After Dark. How you doing? Darn it, I forgot to move that thing again. Uh, you can't see my shirt. We are messed up financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. And um, our goal, remember, is to work with people that often don't think that a financial advisor can help them, right? So the average person is really who we're focused on. Um, naturally, if you have some you know, goals you're trying to hit or uh, want to focus on retirement, long-term investing, getting your dough straight, as we jokingly say. Uh, of course, we want you to know that we're here for you, and we're the only advisor that I can see, especially the only independent advisor that you just go to our website, and you can see exactly what it costs. Uh, so we have a model where we participate in your growth instead of saying, give us $5,000 and we'll create a plan for you, or give us $3,000 and we'll make a retirement plan. Uh, I don't really get that. So Hopefully you'll check us out there. One of the really important things in a retirement plan is um, when to take Social Security, by the way. Have you thought about that? All right. Now, maybe not if you're 40 or something, you probably haven't thought about that. But today we're going to talk about how to uh, Social Security, how it works really simply with the Woodford Reserve. So I, I forgot to pour myself a drink there. Hope you'll join me and, and just kind of hang out. This is like a laid back kind of a class. This is not for the kids where we spend 30 seconds coming up with the uh, the TikTok or whatever it's called. So mm. that is very good. And I'm sorry, that's a pet peeve of mine when people make that noise right after they take a drink. Ooh, <laughs> I got goosebumps just thinking of it. Okay, Social Security is actually really simple to figure out. Generally speaking... There's really only four components into coming up with how much you're going to get from Social Security, right? Now, there's other considerations you may want to uh, think about before you take Social Security, but uh, you personally may uh, be nervous about the tax that you're going to pay on your Social, Secu Social Security that can be taxable, right? So that's a consideration there as well. Uh, your lifespan, maybe you have longevity in your family, maybe you have a disease of some kind and don't have a long lifespan. I, that could be something else. Reported income, you know, things like that that could affect other benefits you may be receiving. Of course, you want to think about that. This is the simple explanation, though, today. There are four things, four things. Uh, so there's four things. You got your work history, your earnings, your age, often called, you just they just say your birth year, and then the age that you take Social Security. So let's start with the work history and earnings. That's really the first two. Um, the way Social Security works is they take your 35 highest working years. So, you know, you're going to work hopefully a lot throughout your life there. And so they take your 35 um, highest working years and they use those numbers. So, you know, generally speaking, you can think like, wow, if I make more money, therefore my, my benefit will be higher if I qualify for Social Security there. Um, for the most part, you'd be right, right. As long as we're talking salary, you know, hourly pay, you know, general wages that are reportable, we're not talking about, hey, I'm a great day trader and I make all this money. Uh, day trading, eh, that's that's not really going to help you there. Um, if you now you could certainly have a company and day trade for your company, pay yourself a salary, pay into Social Security. Yeah, that's possible. But I'm saying if you're like a side gig person where you you build cabinets and then you just sell them and people pay you cash and stuff, you get what I'm saying. You, that's not going to help you make more for Social Security. Um, so for the most part, the more money you make, the higher your benefit will be. Really simple as that. So you have your first two components there, your work history, of course, when you're using 35 years or they're using 35 years, and then your earnings. Um, what happens if you don't have earnings? I just covered this the other day, but what if you only have 30 years of really high, hopefully what you consider very stable earnings, but you don't have 35? Well, Unfortunately, those five years still count. So they just plug a zero in. So let's say you made 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 101, 110, 100, whatever, you made more. And that's over the course of 30 years. 
when we get to the point where you had no income, whether you took a gap year in there somewhere or had a baby or did whatever, um, you get a zero. Naturally, when we're, let's just say we're taking the average of all 35 years uh, as our base component there. Uh, well, zero five times is going to bring down your average there. So that's a consideration. Uh, so that's number one and two, right? Your work history and your earnings. Um, the third thing is, how do we want to do it? The third thing is your age. And I'm going to say your birth year because I'm going to share something here with you that I made just like five minutes ago. We'll, we'll get to it. But um, we'll say your birth year because that's how you're going to see it on the charts here. Your birth year is really sort of defined by Social Security as helping them identify your full retirement age. So if you're older, your full retirement age is young is is earlier. If you're older, uh, so if you're younger, your full retirement age is going to be a little bit later there. So that adjusts over time. Your full retirement age, by the way, is the age where you would get 100% of your estimate or whatever it is. And you can see that on ssa.gov. You can look it up right now, actually, and see what you what you have there. The fourth thing is your claiming age. So again, we have your uh, work history, your earnings, your birth year, and then the year that you're going to, the age that you're going to claim Social Security benefits. Those four things play into how much you're going to get. Now, that's where people get confused because they say, well, I hear if I wait and delay Social Security that I'm going to get more. That's true, but how do you figure it out? What's the simple way? I'll give you that here in a second. The other thing I forgot to mention was your full retirement age may be 67, according to Social Security, but you can take it as early as 62. You could also take it as late as 70. So there's, there's a little bit before and a little bit after. Well, if you take it before, your Social Security is going to be lower. If you wait till after your full retirement age, your Social Security actually goes above your estimate. A lot of people miss that when they're talking about it. So uh, let's just go to this here and talk about it. Uh, looks really simple, right? I even color coded it for you. So for example, I'm going to go down here. If your birth year was 1960 or later, your full retirement age is 67. See how somebody that's older, between, born between 43 and 54, their full retirement age is 66. And anytime you don't see an even 100 in there, that's because uh, it's not, I rounded, right? So they do 66 in three months, 66 in six months, things like that. So let's stay down here for a second. You were born 1960 or after that, doesn't matter when in 1960. And you go to ssa.gov, you will see if you take Social Security at 67, you will get 100% of this amount. Everybody's naturally a little bit different. Then you will be able to figure from there, what, what if I take it at 62? Then you will get 70% of that amount. So for, you know, since it's late and, you know, you've had a drink, let's use easy math. If your full retirement age benefit is $1,000 a month, but you choose to take Social Security at 62 and you were born in 1960 or later, you will be getting 70% of that or $700 a month. So you're giving up $300 a month by not waiting until 67. If you took it at 63, you'd be getting $750 a month, $800 a month, $86.70 a month, $93.30 a month, uh, $930, $933 a month, sorry and 100%. Now, the one thing that can manipulate that is what's called the cost of living adjustment, COLA, if you ever see that. Your benefit now may say $1,000. However, there may be something in two or three years where they raise, due to cost of living inflation, they may raise it to $1,100, right? They just had a big raise actually this year. And so you would just go back to this same chart and say, well, now what? I was thinking I was going to get 1000 Now I'm going to get $1,100. let us take 70% of that. Oh, cool. I'm going to get a few more dollars. Okay. Now look what happens afterwards. If you wait till 68, let's say you don't need Social Security, so you wait, you're going to get 8% more. If you wait till 69, you get another 8% more and so on. Right. But at age 70, you've got to take it. You, you, there's no waiting till 71 and 2 and 3 and 4. Right. So all you really do is you go look up your estimated benefit at ssa.gov. 
if you're not qualified for social security because you don't have what the 40 credits that they say or they, they don't have a number because you haven't you don't have um well they will give you a number still because if you don't have 30 of, of income they're still going to estimate what that's going to look like that's why they call it your estimated social security benefit so you go look that up and then you look in here and you say well i'm gonna take it at 64 i was born in 1961 or whatever uh, therefore, I'm going to get 80% of whatever number I see. This is it. There's not much else to it from there if we're going to stay with the general topic. What are we doing in 2023? We're going an extra layer deep, right? So if, if that was helpful and you're able to kind of get a ballpark of where you want to be, the next question is, is there an ideal year for you? to take social security, like you're an ideal year. You would look at this and go, well, yeah, the ideal year is age 70. Not necessarily. So yes, you would get paid the most amount of dollars, but you may have other income. Uh, you may have IRA distributions, and therefore your social security may be taxed. Up to 85% of it could be taxed. And so if you took it earlier in life, took smaller dollars, but you've yet to start your IRA distributions, maybe none of your social security gets taxed. Well, now let's factor the fact that you took a lower net amount or a lower gross amount. It doesn't get taxed and you have that for age 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, right? Versus saying, I'm going to take it at age 67, get 100% of the benefit, but now 50% of my social security is taxed. So you're now, your net number is lower. Compare the higher number, or presumably the higher number, to the net lower number. I hope that makes sense. And so this is why no one has a video that says, when do you take Social Security? It's impossible to know. Everybody has a little bit of different you know, variable. I have clients that it's, there's no doubt in my mind, I can model it upside down and sideways and say, it's 63 in six months. That's exactly when you take social security. I have other clients where I'm like, you have so much saved up. You're well ahead of the game. You, you just need to take it as, as early as possible. Or on the flip side, you need to wait till the last possible second. And we'll just treat social security as like long-term life insurance, right? Because you, you don't need to. So everybody's a little bit different there. Now, some of you are relying on Social Security and, of course, will need it early. That's a different game. So you get what I'm saying? There, there's not like one great answer. But what I wanted to do tonight was explain. Let's not get lost in the, the mounds of, of uh, web pages on uh, Social Security. Let's just go, OK, my work history, my earnings, my birth year and the age that I take Social Security. OK, cool. Now I can come up with some estimates. You can actually get pretty, you know, fine tune there, right? We cover it all Full retirement age is a hundred percent of your benefit there. And remember social security, social security is taxable. It's a fun fact that uh, they talk about your income that you make. Let's, let's say you make $32,000 or more. Your social security is definitely taxed. Not a question about it. So you know what they do? They raise your, um, they cost a living adjustment, but they don't raise that number. It was like 1994, the last time they raised that number. So here you are getting paid more and more. They're forcing you into a tax on your Social Security. That's, that's the thing that people miss. They're all like, they're going to take Social Security away. No, that you can see clearly they're just taxing it more and more by leaving your maximum income for no tax on Social Security, leaving that real low. It's just ridiculous. So that's that's how they're getting you there. So Social Security will be there, but you may end up paying tax on all of it at some point. And you're like, didn't I already do this? <laughs> this is kind of weird. But that's the world we live in. And so uh, that's really all I have for you tonight. Um, I've been covering some things this week that have been really you know, top of mind because of some of the questions that I've been getting. And so hopefully that helps you there. Um, yeah. I'm honestly, it's uh, what time is it? 1047 at night. Uh, you wondering what I'm going to do? I'm about ready to go out to the garage because as many of you know, um, my car is a 1941 Ford truck and I got pulled over. The brake lights, they're on, but they don't illuminate when you step on the brakes. So yay, something to fix. I think I know what it is actually. I just got to go 
dig it up and uh, check it out. Same thing happened on my other car as well, but uh, I'll be working on that. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the Jazz After Dark series. And if there are topics that we could cover that you find helpful or would find helpful, let me know. You never know. They may get a class just for you. All right, see ya.